Good morning, motivators. Now, beginner endurance athletes, triathletes, running, cyclists, they tend to often get into the sport originally to be healthier, maybe to lose a little bit of weight. And this has been a huge part of the culture of endurance sports, that lighter is always better. Well, this really isn't the case, and there's some screwed up stuff that's going on in our culture that is leading people to be unhealthy and even perform worse in our races. Now on the surface, it makes perfect sense that the lighter you are, the faster you'll go. But there's a lot of studies showing that this is completely wrong. They're focusing on the wrong thing. And what's happening is a lot of athletes are ending up with poor health and even poor race performances. And today I'm going to explain to you exactly why and what you should actually be focusing on. This is a post here by Kara Goucher, who is an elite US runner, like one of the best of all time. And she shows a couple of photos here with just this teeny tiny little muffin top there. And then this little tiny fold. And when I first saw the pictures, I really didn't understand what the big hubbub was about, but it's got 57,000 likes and this has been shared all over social media. The story that she tells is that these pictures are of me running towards the finish line of the New York City Marathon in 2008. If you look closely, you will see that I have skin hanging over the side of my shorts. There's cellulite on my butt and there's no rock hard abs on my stomach. Yet that day I ran a 225.53, placing third. I became the first American on the podium since 1994. I set the American course record by a minute, which still stands today. This was absolutely the fittest I was in my life. Today, I read yet another article about a coach weighing and body shaming women, saying that the numbers tell him how to coach, and I am so sick of this narrative. There is no one way to look as an athlete. Yeah, Kara. Bodies are different, humans are different. I'm so sick of the focus on how something looks instead of what we can do to aid our bodies with love and nourishment to perform at its best. I know so many women with PTSD and lifelong eating disorders due to coaches' comments. When is enough enough? Young women, girls, athletes, your bodies are miracles of strength. If someone tells you you need to look a certain way or weigh a certain amount to be good, that person could not be more wrong. You treat your body well, fuel it, love it, and you will be amazed at how far it will take you. I used to hate that these photos of me existed on the internet, but today I see them as a woman accomplishing amazing things at the highest level. Enough. Don't let anyone stop you for caring for your body. A high school, college, professional coach will eventually move on to another body to critique but your body is all you have. It deserves your love. I freaking love this, Kara Goucher. There are a ton of calculators and studies out there showing that lighter is better in endurance sports. Theoretically, it's just a power to weight ratio that the more power you can put out at a lighter weight, the faster you're gonna go. Therefore, lighter is always better, right? Well, then why? is Kara Goucher putting out a dropkick time that still more than 20 years later stands today as a record. It's because a lot of this anecdotal evidence and the culture of endurance sports is just flat out wrong. What we're finding is that that point at which lightness is a performance enhancer happens way earlier than people are actually expecting. And this focus of constantly thinking that you need to be lighter is actually to the detriment of athletes' health and their performance. And if you watch the end of this video, I'll tell you what you should actually be focusing on. There's even evidence to prove exactly what we're saying. This isn't just Kara Goucher saying this, this is science now saying it. You can Google the study, maximal fat oxidation is related to performance in an Ironman triathlon. And if you go down towards the end, you will see after they talk about how fat oxidation, the ability to burn fat as fuel is related to good race performance. You'll see a little bit down here where it says a positive correlation between race time and body fat percentage. So you read this and you think, okay, well, if I have a lower body fat percentage, of course I'll be faster. No big surprise here, but continue to read on where it says that body weight, lean body mass, 
or leg lean body mass were not related to race time. This next study here, running performance in a timed city run and body composition across sectional study in more than 3,000 runners, they studied 3,000 recreational runners and they looked at body mass, just total weight versus body composition, where you end up kind of isolating weight versus body fat percentage. So let's say somebody is 200 pounds, but totally ripped. Does that mean that they're unhealthy just because of their weight? No, what this found was that body composition predicted speed better than BMI, essentially your height to weight ratio in women by almost double and men by a fair bit less. The more that I talk to elite athletes all around the world about body weight, they all pretty much say the same thing, that yes, lighter is better, but only to the point at which you still feel really good. Elite runner, one of the best in American history, Ryan Hall, ended up finding that when he was about 10 pounds heavier than his lightest racing weight, that was when he actually raced better. In my case, I actually had my personal best and my best race ever when I was about 12 pounds heavier than I thought I should be. Pro triathlete Katrina Matthews is posting a lot these days about how she's been shamed in the course of her career, about how she doesn't look like a runner, yet here she is putting out the third fastest Ironman marathon time in female triathlon history. So why this continual focus on weight? I think because it's so easy and it's just part of this culture that's a little bit broken. So what should you actually focus on? Definitely focus on having a good body composition, less body fat, but don't worry about what the number says. Do the right things to reduce your body fat, but don't obsess about weight. Three major tips to actually execute this. The first thing to do is to focus a lot on strength training. If you end up having more muscle mass through that strength training, your body fat percentage is going to be better. It's also going to raise your metabolism, so it's going to be easier to keep your weight lower, especially as we age. The second thing, and I don't think a lot of endurance athletes do this, but it's really important. When you compare HIIT training to super high intensity interval training, comparing two to six minute intervals versus 15 second to 60 second intervals, that super high intensity interval, the 15 to 60 second interval, that's just all out crazy with big rest in between, that is actually better for body composition because it's very, very top end anabolic strength focus. It's focused on building up your muscles. So don't ignore those super short, intense workouts because they're going to likely have a better chance of improving your body composition. Also on the flip side, focus on really low intensity exercise where you're burning a lot of fat. And then finally, when it comes to weight management, yeah, lighter is better, but only to an appropriate level. If you end up finding that at any point in your training, you are feeling dumpy, that you are feeling a little bit lethargic, a little tired, your motivation is low, maybe there's some niggles popping up. This isn't a part of the process. This is part of your body saying, you know what, I just really can't keep up to the levels that you are giving me. I need maybe a little bit more food and a little bit less training. You'll probably be healthier for it. Probably have fewer cravings. Your body will be less likely to store a lot of fat because it feels like it's in a state of threat. So your stress levels are going to be down. Your body is going to be able to recover a lot better and get leaner. Health is very important, so do those three things. Speaking of overall health, something that I have done every single day for the past year is partnered with Athletic Greens to take a morning AG1 supplement instead of a typical multivitamin, because this is made with real foods, real ingredients, it's absorbed so much better, and it makes sure that the nutritional baseline of my diet is propped right up. If you go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Taryn, get yourself some Athletic Greens for the first time, you can get yourself five free travel packages and a free year's supply of vitamin D. It's good stuff, it tastes really good. It's real food, it's 75 vitamins, minerals, nutrients. And if you want a training plan that encompasses this focus on healthy body composition, you can go to our app at app.mymotive.com. Check it out for free for 14 days where all of these training and health practices are incorporated into your training plans for you. Later, motivators.